Thank you for the great introduction. Thank you everyone for being here in such a cold weather. <sighs> My mom recently told me when I was three years old that I used always to combine food with playing. I always, when I don't want to finish up my meal, I used to hide the food in the video recorder or in the cassette. Somehow it's a kind of a bizarre hobby that I used to have, but more or less this is one of the reasons why I'm here today. <laughs> so I'm Rania Alcala, multidisciplinary designer. I have a great passion for art and design from a very young age. For me, design is like a huge word with so many different disciplines integrated together that we have to really focus on. For me, design is like problem solving. It's all about planning. And we have always designers nowadays to challenge ourselves, to find always new opportunities and problems to solve. And this is always my everyday task, to find like new challenges to do and new challenges to solve. So today I would like to talk to you about my journey. How did it all start? So, I have a great passion always to explore world around me, like to touch surfaces, to find out new textures. I love, for example, the smell of a new book, love to get like embossed paper. I love always to explore surfaces around me. This is like somehow something that I have from a very young age. And I always like to remember the word fun that exists in function. And this is like a theme that I always have to do in my work. I always tend to design things like our eclectic drive from different cultures and styles. So it all started actually 12 years ago. One day during breakfast, it was also a Friday with my family. I was starting a pan, like in the pan, I was starting an egg and my father always loves to buy nuts and seals in his shells because they always maintain like good minerals and they're always like very uh, enriched with like oils. And in the moment when he was cracking them, I found like it's really hard to, and I was really astonished how hard an effort like to crack one nut. For example, like the walnut, it's 67% of the whole foot is the shell. So I was wondering like, why don't we make something out of it? And why don't we extend also the lifespan of those shells when it comes especially to egg or different nut shells? Especially it was a very relaxed atmosphere when we have this kind of gathering for breakfast, we share ideas and usually my mind's opened up. And this is how the idea started. And then I wanted to dig deeper to find out, okay, what about like those shells? I wanted to explore further what are their properties, how, what they are made out of, and explore more further the food waste industry. Then I found out like 30% of food is lost or wasted. And food industry is one of the biggest industries in the world. And this is like a huge amount. So it's uh, resources that we have and it's not utilized. And I wanted really to change the perception of waste, how we can make something out of food waste. We as designers, we're always hungry for new materials. We always want to explore new um, challenges for like when we come to solve any problem. So for me, this was kind of like a starting triggering point that I wanted to utilize. Then I wanted to dig deeper and I found out that there are 1.59 trillion eggs produced worldwide. Can you imagine how much zeros in this number that exists? So it's a huge industry. So I wanted to basically make something out of it and something which is like abundant everywhere. It has nothing to do with a certain region or country, so we can find it everywhere. The same when it comes to nuts. There are 5.13 million metric tons of tree nuts produced worldwide. So there is a huge need of really to explore those surfaces and explore those shells. Then I wanted to dig deeper and I wanted to, okay, understand what are those shells made, like what are the usage of those shells? What can we make out of it? And I found out very interesting fun facts about them. That actually since they are 95% of calcium carbonate, you can give it as a booster to your pets or also feed it for your chicken. They are a great fertilizer for the soil and they are very good for skin irritation because it contains collagen. And they are also can be make your coffee less bitter because, and they capture up to 78% of carbon dioxide in the air. Also another interesting fact that was also for me mind blowing that they found that eggs were found in construction. So in old days, they used to use the whole egg in construction, the egg white, the egg yolk, and the shells itself to combine it with the mortar to reinforce for like combining the bricks together. And this have been used in Charles Bridge, in uh, Charles Bridge.
in Prague and also in Addis Ababa and also in Bosnia. Then after like all of this research, I came across this book called Matisse and Design by Mike Ashby and Cara Johnson. And this book was talking about how each discipline as engineers and designers uses the Matisse differently and how it's important to explore each group how they use the Matisse. And this for me is part also so many ideas that, okay, I wanted, I found that there is a need for me as a designer to follow the science of the material engineers and basically follow all of these technical steps and explore this journey and see how me as a designer, coming from a very spontaneous and creative world, explore these technical steps and also come up with Matisse and see how it's gonna come up with. It of course was very vague and ambiguous in the beginning, but I wasn't sure how what I'm gonna come up with at the end. But I wanted to go through this adventure and journey and basically explore how I can, as a designer, come up with a new material. Also, it was very important for me to create something which is completely sustainable and biodegradable. So the main idea behind what I want to create is to replace all base plastics and if I don't need this object or material anymore, I can easily dip it into my garden and let it decay in peace and also be a good fertilizer for the soil. As well, I wanted to think of like, how can I also design the surfaces and the material and focus also on the aesthetical part and not just only on the technical properties. So this is where all like ideas in my mind that I wanted to explore. Then I had to gather all my research and go for like a master research program in Germany, where I traveled with a huge suitcase full of egg shell white powder, which was very suspicious, but I went through. And I started basically to explore each and every machine and the, this whole world of the material engineering lab. For me, it was like a huge kitchen, it was like a wonderland. I had no clue how to use each and every machine. I had to learn this from scratch. For me, it was also very interesting to learn their terminologies, the new science that they basically um, used on daily basis, but for me, I'm coming from a very spontaneous and creative world, and I wanted to combine the technical stuff and apply this science in also functional and um, like products or uh, surfaces, or basically find further applications for it. And through the research, I was also like exploring each and every shell and surfaces through the microscope, and I was very amazed by how the shells look so different from the inner structure together. They really have a very complex pattern, and I wanted also to get inspired from this, because I always think into visuals and how can I get this inner structure applied on the outer surfaces as well. These were the first trials that I created. Of course, they were just like so scraps, didn't work out. I had so many lots of samples that I had to create and it somehow it was a long trial and error, trial and error in order to come just out of one fragment that can really work and tried out lots of recipe to make something that can work. So let me take you through my process. Basically, I collect the egg and different nutshells from local farms, from bakeries, from restaurants, from different sources. And then I take them to the lab. I wash them really well, make sure there is no bacteria and sterilize them. And then I put them into the oven to make sure that they are free from any bacteria. And then I grind them into different particle size based on what I'm gonna do, like based on the application. And then they can be pressed or extruded or injected molded. And here shows my process of how I worked in the lab. I was always very like, enthusiastic to work with the machines and explore what I can come up with and always thinking into forms and textures. And these were the different samples that came up with. So I used also to combine like, the shells with like, natural colors coming from plants, from herbs, from natural stones and also from like fruit peels. I also had access to cacao shells and coconut shells when I was in Germany, so I was always like trying to find any types of local waste that I can use. And in the future also, I would love to explore more with seasonal waste, so that it depends from each and every region, I can use what they have and explore further materials out of it. Then here came was like always after like coming up with the samples, I always wanted to think of applications. What kind of industries can utilize what I have created? How can I also benefit several industries and applications and have wider audience and basically benefit each and everyone from that? 
So I, one of the first applications that I created was a 3D filament out of eggshells for the additive manufacturing industry. So this filament was, had very stony texture and it was very interesting for rapid prototyping. And this was something that I wanted to also explore further. Also another application was furniture design. The material can be very, very strong because of the eggshells, it's like a bioceramic. So it can really maintain lots of impact and lots of strength. It can be also used for seats so people can actually literally sit on eggshells. So I try to apply different types of products to give to the users that things that we use and utilize on daily basis in our kitchen can really come back to us in a completely new form and basically appreciate our waste. I also tried to challenge myself with organic forms, how I can create stuff that are so different from one another. For example, like this vase, it was looking a little bit like Murano vase glass, but it's so lightweight, it's just made by your breakfast leftovers, just by food waste. And really, I like to have impact of like humor elements with the end users and with the customers to do, educate them in an indirect way. Also, it can be used in interior and exterior. So the, we as designers, we're always hungry for new materials and how we can apply it like in a creative way. So we can still create great designs and also be sustainable and putting into consideration our environment and how we can impact that. Also, it's a very interesting material for lighting because it's not all the same. The material can vary from bendable to translucent to opaque. It has various structures and properties and it always changes according to the application. So it works very well when I want to allow light through and behaves differently with light. So this is like from other applications. Also, it can be great for jewelry, like the jewelry I'm also wearing. Because we, when it comes to jewelry design, there's lots of question marks of we don't know how the, the, the gemstones are like sourced, is it ethically produced or not, and how they are, how the labor is also treated. So imagine like something which is always based on precious um, elements, we can change completely the perception of that and make a statement by using food waste in just jewelry. Also, I wanted to apply it into the fashion industry to have a completely sustainable garment. It can be used into buttons, zipper, or like beads for the clothes. So if I don't need this anymore, I can just put it into my garden or in a compost and let it decay in peace. Also, it can be applied in consumable goods and replace single-use plastics. If I want to do like different products as hair comes. Then comes back again, like the surface design itself, because I always like to have this association with things that around us. Most of the people, when they see the materials for the first time without seeing its origin, they always question, what's this? It smells like a biscuit. Is it something I can eat? It looks like edible stuff. So I was like always having this nice game with everyone seeing the material for the first time. And I tried to associate also the surfaces with things that are around us. Like here, for example, this is a sample out of different egg and nut shells with a bigger particle size that looks like a banana milkshake. Also, by changing a little bit in the mixtures and the particle size, it can look like a white chocolate bar. Also, like the extrusion results was very interesting for me that I couldn't stop myself to create like a, a spaghetti form, which looks really like a spaghetti. So I was always trying to use all the very technical, serious machines in a playful way and impacting basically fun that exists in function. And this brings to my end of my talk that it's a quote that I truly believe in and I truly love by Albert Einstein. It's genius is 1% talent and 99% hard work. It's all about hard work and persistence and trial and error. This is work that didn't come from one year or two years. It was a continuous research and hard work. And this is like the key for me, persistence as success. Thank you so much.